Greg is here. In this episode we will set up the panel for our buttons and spawn the buttons for the inventory. Now we need the panel to show our inventory on the screen. Add the panel node to the UI scene. Let's put it in the middle of the screen. Save it. And let's observe our change on player inventory scene. Good. Now we need a button, which will represent the slot of the inventory on the panel. Create a new scene and add button node. Inside layout you can open transform and set the size to be 48 by 48 pixels. Good. Because this scene will only be representing the button, let's make the button a root node and delete the control node. Then, for testing, let's add some kind of icon. But we don't want our icon deforming the button. So, open icon behavior and set the expand icon to be true. This parameter is a little misleading. It says expand, but it means to fit the icon inside the button area. That includes both expanding and shrinking it. Let's reset our size. Save this scene as inventory slot button. And rename the root node so it will be named properly in hierarchy. Good. Back to our inventory UI. Let's add the buttons to the panel. You can try to place them like this, but it's a lot of manual work. Instead, let's use a grid container node, which will place all buttons automatically in grid pattern. To make the container work, attach the inventory slot buttons. Our buttons have become minuscule in size. It's because the grid layout forced the new size and we need to set up a minimum size for each button. So open the inventory slot button scene, change the minimum size. Oops, never forget to save your changes. Good. Now let's add all our buttons simply by duplicating the button. Let's say our inventory will be 30 slot long. Change the column parameter on green container. So we have our buttons in place. Let's set up communication between button and inventory UI. Create another inventory UI script to the root node. On ready, we will call and create a new method called init, where we will pass the size of our inventory. Let's say it will be 30 as a parameter. This method will initialize our inventory UI by creating buttons on the panel. So we need to reference our panel we will be using to store buttons on the screen and prefab of the button, which we will be creating and placing on said panel. Notice that I use packed scene instead of node in case when we need to reference the scene from the project instead of the node existing on the scene. Rebuild your project and let's reference the nodes. We don't need the buttons anymore on the panel because we will be instantiating them automatically based on the size of our inventory. Inside the init method, use for cycle to call instantiate of the button prefab based on the size of the inventory. And then after instantiating the button, we will add the button as a child to the panel.
Let's test this. So the amount of buttons on the screen will be changed based on the parameter you pass when you're initializing your inventory. This parameter will most likely be a size of your container or inventory. Let's make buttons react to our input. We already have a script called inventory button, but it is attached to the control debug buttons. We work with them through the signals, so those buttons don't really need the script anymore, so remove it. And add it to the inventory slot button. Open the script and let's add the ID of the button on the panel and let's post the ID into the debug print. So when we create the button we want to initialize it and pass its ID so it would know which slot it represent. So create a new method called init. In case like this when your parameter shares the same name as the local variable to reference the local variable instead of the parameter, we will use this keyword. All right. And now when we are instantiating the new button, we need to initialize it by accessing the inventory button script and calling init. Let's test this. As you can see, we are instantiating buttons. And if I press the button, it tells us its ID. In the next episode, we will begin to explore the way to create item definitions in your game. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you for all Patreon support. Likes, comments. See you in the next episode.